double barrel calendar and this launches a new class for us. Uh, this is for educational purposes today, as you see in the disclaimer. We'll get at a few questions uh, and then we'll jump into, we'll take a look at the market. But why do the double barrel calendar? And it's basically, as you picture the shotgun, you're shooting multiple calendars uh, out of the shotgun. And why do it? It, it? You know, one of the main reasons is it gives you more room than a typical single barrel <laughs> calendar. It gives you more room, kind of wider break-even levels, and um, uh, and that's the main reason. Something gives you more room before you have to do something. Uh, is the current environment, uh, is it good for double calendars? From a volatility perspective, yes. Yeah, it's wonderful. I mean, the market's been up, you know, the last 20 days or so, and the, and the volatility's actually gone up, right, which is unusual uh, for the upside. So is the current environment good for double barrel calendars from a volatility perspective? Yes, from a price level, much more challenging, especially on a day like today. Uh, is this strategy good for monthly income? Yeah, that's what it is. It's, it's a positive theta uh, income strategy where the options you're selling are going to decay quicker than the ones you're buying. I think this is a good strategy for monthly income, you know, as you get good at it, right? Is this a good strategy for monthly income for someone who doesn't know what they're doing? No. You know, but once you get know what you're doing, yeah, I think it is. Can you do this strategy with shorter duration options? Uh, absolutely, you can. And I think it's always good to diversify your duration on trades. What vehicles would you use? Today I'm going to talk about SPX. We could do SPX, RUT, um, SPY, IWM, uh, any, you know, any really liquid. Uh, liquid just means trades a lot of option contracts, uh, ETFs or stocks, right? Some of your your more liquid stocks. Uh, which way to point the barrel? What does this mean? You know, a double barrel uh, calendar is basically we're shooting out a couple calendars. Well, you can shoot them out where one is at the money, one is out of the money on the call side. And you could shoot them out where one is at the money and then another one's out of the money on the put side. There's different ways you can shoot them out of there. And so we'll talk about a couple different ones today. All right, so let's take a quick look at a price chart. Here's an SPX one-year price chart. I took this maybe an hour ago or so. I don't, we're probably pretty close to it. SPX is at 23.97 as of March 1st. So let's get a little bit of perspective. Here's a price chart in SPX for the last, you know, last 12 months uh, from basically – uh, March of 2016 to about March of 2017. And as you can see here, you know, pretty range bound for a lot of 2016, some pretty good range bound activity. But you've also had, especially lately, if you look at this action here, which is, I think, very unusual, basically from Feb 8 to March 1st. Um, as we broke out of the 2300 uh, range uh, in the SPX, right? As we broke out of the 2300 range in the SPX, on Feb 8, we were 22.94. On March 1st, today, we're 23.97. You're basically up 103 points or 4.5% in three weeks. Is that unusual for the downside? No. Is it unusual over the last three, four years for SPX to go up 103 points in three weeks? As Sylvester Stallone would say, absolutely, right? So, and, 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 and the weird thing of the whole thing is, so the last month, what's, gone, what's happened is we've been up 103 points in the SPX, which is 4.5% in three weeks, which is very fast. And that's what makes it difficult. If we were up 103 points in three months, no one would say anything. It'd be fine. But in three weeks. But the most interesting thing of this is that 
with the market going up 103 points, everybody would say, well, Dan, the volatility absolutely had to, absolutely had to go down, right? No, VIX on Feb 8th was 11.45. VIX today is 12.11. So Dan, tell me what happened. We're up 103 stinking points in the SPX in three weeks, and the VIX is up 0.66. Is that unusual, as Tom Jones would say? It's very unusual, but when we start getting in that 10, 11 area in the VIX, even when the market rallies, the VIX is only gonna go down very begrudgingly. It's gonna fight like an, like, a, like an alley cat in Chicago. So this has been a challenging period in that we've had speed to the upside. Here's the other thing to keep in mind, perspective. For range bound traders during this period of time, this period of time, and even the beginning of the year, right? Even the beginning of the year, which has been the first month or four and a half weeks of this year, wonderful, right? And we're, hey, this is wonderful. Ching, 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 ching. But when we get this, right? Hey, Dan, this isn't what I'm signing up for. I don't want this. But again, it's perspective, my friend. You know, in, in a Chicago, you know, if you live in Chicago, what you sign up for is, hey, beautiful city, in my opinion, it's the most beautiful city in the world, right? Hands down. And I've been a lot of places. I think it's hands down. But you got the weather problem. But that's part of the game you sign up for, right? And so to me, in Chicago, you know, if you start the year January, you know, you got January, February, March, snow usually starts in December. And it gets pretty bad, and sometimes we skip spring, right? Sometimes we don't get spring till May. It's supposed to come in March, right? Hey, but that's okay. There's different seasons, right? Then we get spring, maybe a little bit May, June, it starts getting nice. Then you get the summer, July, August kind of thing, September, the fall, but it's different seasons. And, you know, the markets, you have to learn to trade Fast up markets with the volatility going down, fast mar markets on the downside, volatility going up, range bound. That's part of the game, right? And a lot of us, let's face it, I know in our community, shared a mentor, you, you get a little spoiled because the last three of the last, you know, almost the last four years, which way has the market been going? Up, right? So so people get a little, you know, they so, so what's an up environment mean? It means the option volatility stay low, so you don't really get pinched on short Vegas strategies on that, and it goes up. And if you're selling puts or doing covered rights or selling put credit spreads or doing some strategies that don't have much risk on the upside, you're feeling pretty good. This stuff happens. It's part of it. Now, what's the good perspective on it? We'll get a change of season. You know, is it difficult for, for some range-bound trades? Yeah, it can be more, much more difficult, right? But it's, you know, things will change, right? It does, you know, we're not going to, you know, unless this is the most unusual year in the history of our country and we keep going up, you know, again, what are we, since the, you know, this Election Day rally, which basically started on basically November 4th, we were at 2085, call that the election, when the election day rally started, November 4th, 2085. So today, we're hit up the words of almost, or 2398. That's basically four months, right? We've gone from 2085 up to 2398. Uh, that's 313 points. That's 15% in four months. You know, if, if we look the last 10, 15 years in the market, What's the market usually go up in 12 months? Anybody know what's been the average of the last 10 years or so? Eight, nine, is that about right? Eight, nine percent, eight, nine. So we're up 15% in 14 months. Excuse me, I wrote this wrong. Sorry, sorry, Dino, thanks catching me on that. Four months, sorry about that typo. We're up 15% in four months. Now, could this be the one? where we're gonna be up 15% every four months for the rest of the year. Yeah, it could happen. 
would I bet my left toe, my right toe, my right ear, and my left ear that it won't happen? Yeah. Could it happen? Anything can happen, right? But that's a heck of a move. It doesn't matter who who's in the presidency, right? It doesn't matter who um, is in. That's a heck of a move, right? And this is all based on what we think can happen, right? I mean, the presidency has only been, what, five weeks, six weeks or whatever. So anyways, it's just perspective, right? And I just think as you look at a price chart, but that's going to be every year. Every year you're going to have some range-bound periods. You're going to have some, you know, when, when, it's, when the market's in a range, it's more palatable. Right, and then when it breaks out of that range, and when we broke out of the 2300 level here, right, right now we're still. Let, let's face it, since we broke out about Feb 8th, do we have a range yet? No, no, we don't have a range. It's still moving. So, with all that being said, let, let's look at. We're going to look at this double barrel calendar, but first, I think it's probably. It's probably good to talk about just a single calendar, just to update people. Single calendar trade, and I looked at this example today with SPX at 23.98. The trade is buying one April 13 expiration 2400 call and sell one March 29. 2400 call okay so so what can you see what a calendar is right off the bat okay let's see what Dan's doing SPX is a 2398 it looks like Dan is selling an at the money call and the at the money call is in this particular example 28 days from expiration March 29 expiration is about 28 days and it looks like Dan is buying the, the one he's buying is further out than the one he's selling. He's buying the at the money 2400 calls, and that's about 43 days from expiration. All right, so really what the definition of a calendar or one type of a calendar is, you're going at the money, SPX is around 2400, and you're buying a further out expiration, and you're selling a closer in expiration, and you're doing it at the same strike. I happen to do it in calls here. This is the expiration. This is the graph at expiration, okay? And so I would call this a 28-day calendar. Dan, why would you call it a 28-day calendar? That's just how you do it with calendars. You know, if I'm buying my option 43 days out and I'm selling my short option 28 days from expiration, you use the short uh, duration of the trade to label it. So this is a 28-day calendar, right? Because my short option expires on March 29th, 28 days out. The cost of this, when you buy it, when you do a calendar, it's a debit transaction. So here I'm paying $6.50. Obviously, my long option is going to be more expensive than my short option. So uh, my margin or capital, I have to put at a broker's firm. In this example, in SPX, would be $650. Now, this is the expiration graph. This is the graph today, if we put it on today. So over time, it's going to morph into the blue is going to morph into the red graph. So who can tell me if we just start out with, so and Stuart just said SPX just hit 2,400. So this would be a calendar putting it right at the money, okay? How do you make money in a calendar, right? How do you go, you know, here's the P&L. So it says I can make at expiration about $1,000. How the heck do you make money in a calendar? How do you make how do we get that beautiful graph that you can make all that money, right? That's a P&L graph. Here's the zero graph. How do you make it? Okay, so here's how you make money in a calendar. You make money in a calendar simply by, let's put some numbers on this. So let's say we, I'm just making these numbers up. 
right? Just so you can have something to look at. You with me? So let's say, let's say I bought this call for $18, my long, and I sold my short for $12. So that would be around the debit of $6. All right. So even though my long call is more expensive than my short call, because, because my March expiration is the expiration of my short call, my short call, the $12, is going to decay a lot quicker than my long call price of 18 Why? Because my short expiration will expire in 28 days. My long expiration is going to be worth a decent amount in 28 days. Why? Because it's got 43 days to go. So, so that's, you know, if you look at these Greeks here, it says I have some positive theta that will come in every day. It's just when you do a, why is that? Because when you do a calendar trade, you're buying an at-the-money option with the most time, that's where the most time premium is, and you're selling an at-the-money option with the most time premium. But you get positive decay because your short option is going to decay quicker than your long option. Why? Because it has less time. So in this example, I'm starting my deltas close to zero. 0.50 is pretty close to zero. And so my Greeks, delta and gamma refer to price risk. I'm starting out close to zero deltas because of doing it at the money. Theta refers to time decay, and it's a positive number, 7.8. It's a theoretical number that says my shorts are going to decay quicker than my longs, and today, and this is a 28-day trade, I'll bring in theoretically about $8 a day in theta if things don't move too much. Well, today they are moving. but And as each day goes on, that number is going to grow. It might get to 9, 10, 20. As you get near expiration, it's really going to grow. So that's uh, that's not a linear number. And then you have this theoretical number, Vega 62. What the heck does that mean? Again, I'm putting up $650 for this trade. My cost is $650. It's a debit. Some people, some people get. How many people does anybody get caught up in the fact that some people think getting a credit is better than a debit? Some people think that. They'd rather get a credit for something than a debit. The bottom line is, on these trades, the debit or credit has nothing to do with the profit, right? Maybe people get that idea because, you know, they used to, you go to banks a lot, right? And banks' credits seem better than debits, don't they? But in the world of trading, does it matter if you're paying a debit or a credit on these income trades? No. Well, what if you're convinced that a credit means something? Well, do it. It's harmless, right? Right? It's like if you think there's a Santa Claus, it's harmless, it's a good thing, but you're wrong, right? What's the other one? Bigfoot. If you think there's a Bigfoot, you know, or you're a conspiracy theorist and you think that uh, whatever you think, that's okay. You're not harming anybody, right? It's okay. Yeah. Oh, um, all right. So I made a little typo here. It should be 2360. Five. Okay, that should be 2365. So we talked a little bit about this. I think you have an idea. So the other thing is this. This is the expiration graph, and then you have these things here, right? We've got these things called expiration break-even points. Hey, Dan, and I'm going to go faster after this introductory example. Uh, so you have these expiration break-even points, and, and, and what are they? So expiration break-even points are at expiration, which is in 28 days, where does P&L line start crossing zero? What point at expiration, at what point do you start losing? And so in this example, the upside break-even is 24.35 and the downside is 23.65. So we've got basically about 35 points up and 35 points down from this level of 2400. Everywhere in that area, we make money at expiration. If you go outside of that area, 
then we start losing money. So on this range-bound trade, again, there's a lot more to it than this, but you have an idea on an income trade. It's an income trade because it's positive theta. Why is it positive theta? Why am I getting positive decay? Because my short option, even though it's a smaller number, my short option is a smaller number than my longer number, it'll decay faster. So as long as we're like basically up 35 points or down 35 points over the next 28 days, we're in pretty good shape. As we start moving outside of that area, I would need to adjust or take it off or do something. So you kind of know the palatable area there. It's like if somebody has, I don't know if any of you guys ever have, uh, if any of you guys have like uh, electric fences and you have dogs in, you know, the electric fence is this area where your, your dog can cruise around. Outside that area, it's gonna get a severe shock, right? And so that's what's nice about these strategies, the repeatable strategies you can put on because you know, you're, you know when they're gonna get in trouble. Right, you know when the dog is going to get zapped. All right, so this is a single calendar trade, and the whole idea behind double the double barrel calendars, we're going to get a little wider. We're going to widen out the break evens a little bit. All right, now we're going to start getting into the double barrel calendar. All right, so what if we want to point the double barrel shotgun uh, neutral? All right, how would we set it up now? In the class, what are we going to focus on for the next four, for the starting next Wednesday for the four classes is I'm going to take different double barrel calendars and show you, put on live trades and show you how we would manage them, how to adjust them if they go against you, what, how we would structure them if we have this type of market condition. So we'd cover all that practical, how you practically do this stuff, right? From putting on the trade, what strikes do you put on if the market's moving like it is now? What's our what's our profit targets and when would we adjust it? What do we do if it goes against us? And setting a plan, right? That's what we would be doing. Pointing the double barrel. So this is a double barrel. Uh, so we're shooting out of the, boom, out of the rifle. This would be a neutral, right? This is pointing the barrel neutral. So if we're at 23, Roughly 2390 in the middle. We're putting a calendar on at the 2410 strike, 20 points up, and we're putting one on at the 2370 strike in the puts, 20 points down. So on the call side, we'll put one at the 2410 strike, 20 points up, and then on the put side, we put one at the 2370 strike, 20 points down. And again, it's you know the foundation of a double barrel calendar or double calendar is the same foundation of an iron condor. And what's that? You're selling an out of the money call and you're selling an out of the money put. That's that's the foundation of an iron condor and a double calendar or as we call it here a double barrel calendar. Now our deltas are close to zero because we're starting out relatively neutral and this is the room we have, right? So our expiration break-even points are gonna be like right here and right here. So everywhere in this area, you know, we've got some room there, okay? And this is a 28 versus 43 day um, calendar. So this would be more setting it up more neutral. And again, you can see here's with SPX at 2389 or close to 2390. You can see your call calendar is set up at the 2410 strike. This is what we buy. This is what we sell. Your put calendar is set up at the 2370 strike. This is what we sell and buy. The debit's going to be more on a double barrel because you're buying two calendars. There'd be 1365 debit for one contract in this particular example. It'd be cheaper if you did it in SPY. So it'd be capital of 1365. Your Greeks, here's your delta in price risk. Your delta is going to be close to zero. So you can see it looks pretty centered, doesn't it? This is the expiration graph. Uh, you have positive theta. Again, the same concept. Your short options are going to decay quicker than your long options. 
That's where you get positive theta. And your vega is 130. What does that mean? It's a theoretical number. What the heck does that mean? That means, again, you're buying more time premium in your April 2410 call than you're selling in your March 29 call, 2410. Why are you buying more time premium? Because it's farther out. And you're buying more time premium in your 2370 put than you're selling in your March. Why? Because in April has more time premium. Okay, so if the option volatility of each of these four options goes up one point, I'd theoretically make $130. And it doesn't always go like that, that they all go up the same. So if, if each of these four options went up a point in volatility, it's a theoretically I'd make $130. How, Dan? How would that happen? Because, again, in my long options, I'm buying more time premium than the ones I'm selling. So if volatility, which is a measure of the time premium part of an option, if volatility goes up in each of these four options, I'll make $130 because I bought the ones with more time premium. If volatility of each of these four options goes down a point, I would lose $130 theoretically. Dan, how would you lose $130? Because I'm buying more time premium in my longs than I'm selling in my shorts. So if the time premium reduces, I get caught holding the bag because I bought the ones with more time premium. So this would be a double bear or a pointing the barrel neutral. Yeah, and, and you can never lose more than you pay on a calendar. Same principle as a long call. So I'll get the questions in a second. So how about if I point the barrel of the rifle neutral to bullish, which we probably would in the current environment, right? If we're at just the way things have been going, if we're at 2390, I'm placing the put calendar right at 2390, and I'm placing the call calendar 20 points up at 2410. So that gives us more room on the upside less room on the downside. Our deltas would be starting out pretty close to neutral, about three deltas long. We have positive theta and the long vega. If we're neutral to bullish, all right, here's a strategy, make money if it sits, make money if it goes down a little bit, and makes money if it goes up, right? A reasonable amount, right? And if it goes up too much or too fast, we'd have to adjust it. But this would be more of a neutral to bullish a type strategy, how we tweak it. And then here would be, we want to point the barrel neutral to bearish, and we're at 2390. I can put the call calendar at 2390 and the put calendar at 2370, so it's a little neutral to bearish. So you have some flexibility at the setup how you want to set it up, right? And, and I have a kind of a four-step risk management plan. You know, number one is the setup. How do I set it up? Well, you know, it, it, the setup is going to be based on the levels of prices in the market, the volatility levels, uh, a little bit of your opinion, but more where the price levels of the market are, the volatility. So how we set it up, uh, step two, would be your profit target and max loss, right? So you gotta have a plan. You don't just whip this stuff on. Number three, when would we adjust? And number four, how would we adjust? So, you know, there's nothing left to chance here, right? This is, you know, risk management is very solid here. And, and, and that's the key. And in and, and all the trades we do, whether it be a credit spread, an iron condor, a butterfly type trade, a calendar, a cash secured put, credit spread, whatever, the whole business plan, you say, what, what makes it that you, can, that you can do this on a weekly or monthly basis and, and at the end of the year do pretty well? Well, it's because we're, we're, we're making a business based on probabilities and time decay. And what really makes it become a business is your ability to manage risk, right? That when it goes too far against you one way, you can adjust it or you know, get out, you have a plan. Whereas it's tough to have a business model to buy, I'm going to buy long options, decaying assets, a, a long call or put every month and, and hope they move. That's a tough business model, right? This is a much easier business model, model where you're selling options 
you know, and, and in some cases you get probabilities in your favor, like iron condors, if you, or even double calendars, if you sell the options far enough out of the money. But in other instances, even when we're selling options at the money, we're really getting decay in our favor. So selling options or selling time premium, which is what you're doing, selling the time premium part of an option, you know, all of that is good, but the key to being successful is how you manage them, right, and the plan you have. You know, I can teach a cook at Chipotle burritos, right, to do an iron condor or a butterfly or credit spread in about an hour. But I can't teach them how to manage it and get consistent making money on it in an hour. It, it takes a lot of trades and time, right? All right. Well, thank you for your, your, your uh, patience here. And the class will be uh, basically two weeks. Uh, we will launch the class. The first live class will be March 8th. That's a week from today. They'll run Wednesdays and Fridays at 1 p.m. Central for two weeks. Just a two-week class. Uh, it'll be about four to six hours, somewhere in there, minimum four hours of live content. And as you can see here, uh, the first class other than today, this is the class today, uh, the first class a week from today will be with myself. Uh, Wednesday and Friday of next week I'll teach. Mark Fenton, who uh, is a mentor with me, here at Share to Mention, we'll be teaching on March 15th, and I'll finish it off on St. Pat's Day, March 17th. Uh, the cost for the four sessions, again, each session will be uh, an hour to an hour, minimum hour, uh, hour uh, to an hour and a half, and uh, the cost will be $197. All classes and materials are archived, so you can watch it two, three, four months after, and uh, on the class page, there's Q&A, and you can just ask questions, right? And so even if you can't watch some or all of the classes live, you can watch it when you want and ask questions, and then I'll, you know, all the emails come to me. So that's nice. All the times will be at 1 p.m. Central as far as watching it live, uh, but they will be archived probably an hour to an hour and a half after the class. So you can watch it, and then you can ask questions. All right, well, thanks, everybody. I appreciate you coming and look forward to seeing you. It should be a great class, uh, kind of like, a, you know, in, in a way, an uh, alternative to iron condors in a kind of a lower volatility environment. The double-barrel calendar. See you next Wednesday, folks. Thanks.